Hey and welcome back to another video. So in today's video we're actually going to look at the at state property wrapper in Swift UI and we're going to break down what it is and when we should use it. Now if you haven't checked out my video before about Swift UI state and data flow I highly recommend that you check that out as a basis so you can understand a lot of the concepts that I'm going to be going over again. So let's get straight into the video. So because views in Swift UI are value types, this means that whenever they are modified, it creates a new copy of itself with a new modified value. So we don't have the same view anymore. We actually have a new view with the updated values. And you can actually check out more of this breakdown in my videos, breaking down Swift UI and getting started with Swift UI and Xcode. So sometimes we may actually need our views to change based on some kind of reaction, but still have a reference to a value in memory. So that is the whole point of the at state property wrapper. So state acts as a single source of truth for our views. So when our state property changes, it will cause our view to be redrawn and the UI will reflect the new UI local state. So let's type this out and see how we can use state. So at the top here, we're just going to type out a few things to note before we um, carry on is you'll notice here that when we actually specify state we don't just say state we actually have to use the at symbol before it so this here is a property wrapper so this property wrapper for at state actually has some logic now we can't actually see the actual you know logic within this property wrapper because it's hidden behind the apple um api but what this does is it allows us to do what I said before, where it will store this value in memory for us so our Swift UI view can react to these changes. And you'll also notice as well that we actually mark our property is on as private. So this is because we actually want to protect this property and we don't want any other views to have access to it so it can change. So remember what I said before, this is our views source of truth. So any view outside of content view shouldn't actually have access to this at all because it could potentially you know, modify our view and then cause it to have some invalid data. So after this, you'll notice that we have the keyword var here. And we're using this because our property could possibly change the value. Now, if you were to specify this as a constant like this, you'll notice that you'll actually get an error. And the reason why this is because after you set a constant, you can't actually change its value. That's it. But opposed to constants, if you use the var, you can actually change the value after it's been set. So that's why you need to use var. And then finally, we declare our variable name and we specify here the type. So I specified here that I want the variable name to be is on because we're going to simulate a switch. And I've said that I want the type of it to be Boolean. And the reason why I chose Boolean and not something like string or integer is because a switch can either be on or off, which is true or false. Now, I specified a type here like this, but you don't actually need to do this if you don't want to. If I took that out, this would be still perfectly valid. But I'm just adding the type in so it's just clear what the data type is at first glance for this property. So what we're going to do here now is we're actually going to add in some logic for our view based on our source of truth. So we're going to change the views that you see on the screen depending on our source of truth. So let's see how this works. So we'll actually add a button in and then we'll actually toggle the value of it. So let's do that now. So rather than having a text here, we'll go replace this. Okay, cool. So what we've got here now is we've got a VSAC on the screen and within, a v, within our vertical stack, we've now got our button and within the button action, we're just saying that we want to toggle the value of is on. So this toggle will set the inverse of the value that is currently set to for boolean so if this was true it would actually set it to false and because this is false when we actually call this function it's actually going to set it to true so it's just toggling whether it's on or off and then within our label <clears throat> and then within our label we just use the um, text view toggle me to represent some text on the screen here so when someone actually taps the button we actually want to re-render and show a new view on the screen so what we're going to do now is we're actually going to use a conditional to you know handle this by changing the text view that is on the screen here so let's do that now so what we're saying here is if it is on then we're going to show a text view that says the switch is on or else show a text view that says the switch is off so if you run this in the preview what you'll notice that when you tap this button you'll see that the text actually changes so this is working fine 
So this is working fine if you actually want to show um, two different views depending on a, you know, boolean. But something's actually happening here. And what's actually happening is that this is actually not generating the exact same view. So what's actually happening here now is that whenever it's on changes, it's actually showing this text view or else it's actually showing this text view. So technically these two views that you're seeing on the screen are not actually the same view. Now, if you're someone who wants to perform some kind of animation on the same view, depending on some kind of state and you're wondering why it's not animating, this is actually why. But if you're someone who actually wants to change the views based on, you know, some kind of state, well, this is still perfectly valid. But what I actually want to do is I, I actually want to maintain the same text view, but just change the text within it. So how can we actually accomplish this? Well, we can actually accomplish this by just modifying the texts, the text views, local state. And by we can do this by using a ternary operator within the text view. So let's do this now. If I change the is on, so now what we're doing in this example is rather than re-rendering two different text views, we're actually using the same text view, but this time we're just modifying this text local UI state. If I hit toggle me, it looks like nothing's different and everything looks the same, but under the hood in Swift UI, this is actually using the same view. So if we wanted to, we could actually add animations and actually see that in place cause it would animate the changes for this view. Usually the rule that you want to follow in those two examples is if you're modifying a view's property and the local UI state, then you want to use a ternary operator like I've done here. But if you actually want to switch between two completely different views and show two different, like if you want to show like a red box and a blue box on the screen, then you may be better off using some kind of control, control statement, such as an if statement, switch or optional chaining, and that's the way to go. So now that we've gone through reading our view state, We've gone through an example of modifying our state property, but sometimes you may need to bind to it. So what does binding mean? So think of binding as a connection between two objects and a parent and its child. So when a child object is able to modify and read values from the source of truth. So let's look at an example of this since it's possible to do this with the binding property wrapper, which we'll explain in the next video. So we're going to use a Swift UI control that has a binding property called toggle. So let's add this onto our screen now. So rather than us having our text and our button, we're just going to add our toggle. So you'll notice that we're using our property, but this time we have a dollar symbol. So when working with a state property, you have the value you can read, which is what we use in our previous example, but you also have its projected value that we can write to it in order for us to re-render our views and reflect their new state. So we'll break this down even more in the next video around bindings. So what's happening here is that our toggle is updating our state property depending on whether it's on or off. It will set our property to true or false, causing our view to re-render. So in order to see this in action, let's add in an SS symbol light switch and we'll use a ternary operator. Since we want to modify this view's local state and change the symbol, we don't want to recreate a new view every single time. So let's add this in now. So now we have our toggle on the screen, you'll notice here that is on is being written to via the value within our toggle because of the binding between our state property and this here. So on our image, what we're saying here is we don't want we don't want to actually draw a brand new image view here. Instead, we want to modify this view's local UI state. So we're checking to see if it is on and depending on whether it is on or not, it will actually change the modifiers that are applied onto that view. So we actually run this in our preview and toggle our light switch. You'll see here that the views local UI state changes and we're actually modifying the same view here because we're not using an if statement to say if the competition is met, show this view or else show the other view. So this is exactly what we want. So that's everything from me in this video. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to hear your feedback in the comment section below. Also, if you haven't already, I really appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up button and give this video a like. And if you haven't already, then subscribe to the channel by hitting the subscribe button and hitting the notification bell so you can get updates whenever I release a new video. That's everything from me. I'll catch you on a bit. Deuces.